A Woman's Business Guide Women's Business Introduction Men want to make money, period. Women want meaningful experiences. They want relationships with other people, to have children and to do something creatively inspired at work. This is why you won't see more female bosses. They don't want to deal with it. They're wired to be more nurturing than capitalist champ. The federal government and most states have special programs to help women in business. Contact the Small Business Administration and the Women's Business Development Offices for more information. In Canada, go to msvu.ca slash cwb comma center for women in business. Contact both the normal offices of economic development and the minority business development offices with the SBA, sba.gov, commerce.gov slash resources slash mbita underscore info. Many states have a law which requires that they give 15% of their procurement contracts to women. Proceed just as men do by taking business courses at night classes in your area. Some states have women's commissions which offer general information. In addition, some states or regions have women's yellow pages which are books you can buy at the bookstore or get at the library which list women's businesses and resources for women. Refer to the offices of small and disadvantaged business utilization. The SBA is your major center for help and info. Ask them about microloans and procurement contracts with government agencies. Try number 331.44-48, number 338.64. Number 650.1082 or BV4596 and HD 6054.4 or, or HF5035 at the library for books about women at work and in business. In addition to books, many libraries offer free workshops, business videos, tapes and most of the current magazines. Ask the librarian for current copies of zoning regulations. Get familiar with new books and resources in your field, computers, healthcare, crafts, etc., as well as in business skills, advertising techniques, financing, etc. Look for good business magazines. A wide variety of local and national organizations have sprung up to serve the informational, lobbying and networking needs of business entrepreneurs. Through meetings, services, or newsletters, business trade organizations offer members everything from camaraderie to knowledge to perks such as group rates on health insurance. With women's liberation and feminism, women have entered the workforce en masse and even though they're now allowed to do the same jobs as men in most fields, the pay is still roughly 75% that of men meaning for every dollar a man makes, a woman makes 75 cents for doing the same job. The way to make it in a man's world is to play by men's rules but stay late alike feminine. Be assertive but keep some feminine charm and dignity. Don't go overboard and try to become like a man. Be yourself. You have a sisterhood with other women as the minority. Use it rather than compete with each other to either try to win the favor of men or try to outdo one another. Know what you want and pursue it in a pleasant way. Always be a team player. Working hard is the sure solution to most problems at work. If you feel like going to a library, here's where the practical books are. Money, number 332. Jobs. Number 331. Business books go from number 650-659 at the library and are, are mostly between HD and HG of the Library of Congress system. HC, Economic History. HG, Finance. HJ, Public Finance. For information about e-commerce, using computers, creating a website and marketing it. Try number 002-005 and number 658-659 at the library. Some women's magazines have useful tidbits of knowledge in them about how to live a better life. Women.com Chapter 1 A Woman's Business Guide Women in Business 1 Look good, feel good in a down-to-earth way. Don't read frivolous women's magazines, especially at work. Put God first family second and career third. Mary Kay, founder of Mary Kay Cosmetics. Just like with men, women in business who want it all will generally not get it all. It's very difficult to be a successful business owner, mother, homemaker, trendy dresser, fitness buff, sex kitten, 
paragon of vitality, pious Christian, loving community volunteer, sociable bridge player and wife. Some claim to manage it, a few are actually happy and successful but expect to prioritize in one area to lose out. Find a comfort zone between all these areas where you're comfortable. Don't sell your dignity to make it. For some men, business success means everything. For some women, it does too but I would presume you value your family more than making it big in business. A comfortable level of success with a happy family life is much better than breaking your behind trying to be superwoman, all things to all people. No matter what, you can't please everybody all the time. When all is said and done, all that matters is to please your kids and have a good family life. Most successful women in business are the ones who give time to raising their children and being with their husbands because they're happier that way. As a woman, you should be naturally more friendly, sociable, sensitive, and team-oriented than men in general. Use it to your advantage. Don't scheme your way to the top. Do it by being friendly, loving, and practicing the golden rule. Respect others. Share your ideas and encourage them to share their ideas. Don't sacrifice your ethics, standards, or femininity to succeed. You should be able to make it on being a good person rather than all that toughness, firmness, badass, barbarian business diatribe that permeates the current business culture. How you present yourself, how ladylike or masculine you are speaks more about your character than your position, job title, or status. Don't be a slave. There are many women out there working for a few bucks an hour or working careers that suck everything out of them. If you've got a high-paying job yet come home to do the petty housework, why bother? Hire some student or a nanny slash maid to do it for $10 an hour a couple of hours a day. If your workplace is not family-friendly with time off for maternity leave, daycare facilities, flexible working hours, an option to telecommute some of the time, etc., work to instill these changes there. If you want to make it in business and have a family to boot, pick a husband from the new school, someone who will respect you for you, let you be yourself, support your career, not feel threatened if you make more money than he does and be willing to change diapers and drive the kids to school. Men have fragile egos, that's a fact. The average male don't want no woman to get the better of him and that includes his wife so even if you are the cock of the walk or the mother hen of the glen at work, don't bring that dominant, self-righteous attitude into the home. You would think that after being professional and business-like all day long, you would want to come home to be soft and relax with a supportive husband but some women have bastardly and sewer husbands and some are so power-hungry that they feel the need to be in control everywhere, even at home. Watch yourself. Who is the real you not the fantasy you think you are? Get your kids involved in your business. Try to coordinate you and your husband's work schedules such that you spend time with each other and don't compete as to who has the most important job or business. Help other women under you learn the ropes of business. If you're a young woman, look to the older ones to mentor and inspire you. In essence, if you want to make it in business, you have to follow all that cornball stuff that applies to men like setting goals, being disciplined, focusing, being friendly and supportive, being a workaholic, feeling burnt out at times all the while trying to maintain your femininity and probably raising a few kids on the side. Use your women's intuition to learn things and get ahead. Think like a man but still be a woman, at least on the outside. Help people, make a difference. Put people at the top of your list, both customers and workers. Have pride in what you do. Stay easygoing. Many women these days are starting home businesses. You could try selling something from home like cosmetics, lingerie, or adult products, the three most popular things women sell at home. Refer to my self-employment book for ideas and check out the wealth of ideas at websites like busymoms.com. Mompreneursonline.com Momshelpmoms.com Momsnetwork.com Try number 650.1 or HF5386 which is the business success section of the library for a few books on women in business. Women in business too. Men are assumed to be born businessmen. Women have to prove it every step of the way. 
I still have to work with jerks but now I get to pick them. Woman in business. There's nothing like being in a helpless situation to get you motivated to do something for yourself, i.e., the divorce or the glass ceiling, women stunted at work because of their gender or simply let go as they pass 50 years old. The biggest issue regarding women in business is the paradigm of changing women's roles. Women have traditionally been brought up to be nice, to try to smooth things over and to go out and find a man to take care of them but that was then, this is now. It's not really changing en masse, only changing for the people who want it to. Nowadays women have the freedom to do what they want, either stay home and raise kids, pursue a career or do both. One big issue I've discussed elsewhere is that of the single career woman lulled into a false sense of security by the media which reports on older women having babies but virtually all of these women were artificially fertilized and not with their own eggs. The eggs start to deteriorate rapidly after 35. If you're a single career woman and think you will get married and have kids someday, you'd better start looking for a husband and getting on it as soon after your 30th birthday as possible if you're serious because your biological clock is ticking. The biggest complaint or concern women in business have is whether they lose their femininity and take on abrasive, gruff exteriors which permeate into their personalities and affect their emotional lives with their friends and intimates. There are no easy answers. No one path is right. It's a constant vigilance to a middle-of-the-road approach. The biggest boom or reason for starting a business for many women, aside from the fact that some do it out of desperation when they have no options left, is that they have a lot of energy by nature that they can't release at work because it's either a stilted or routine atmosphere. One of the key ways to live a happy life day by day is to constantly release the potential natural, Inspired energy that lives inside of you and being in business for yourself is a great way for an energetic person to do something for herself rather than waste her energy working for someone else or waste it on other frivolous ventures. Just like with men, some women are born entrepreneurs and have that level of callousness and savvy to get the job done well while others, just like men, are more people-oriented as opposed to the bottom line and just want to have easy times and be friends with everyone. The bottom line of all successful people in business is that they are driven by some vision to do something worthy to help a lot of people and make a lot of money, the American dream in the flesh. A lot of women have unique ideas and go with them. I've seen unique products with things like low-calorie desserts, multicolored nail polish, a topsy-turvy gadget for the hair, a thing you hang bacon on while cooking it so the fat drips off, home care service for the elderly and all kinds of other ideas. Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. This is so true. If people call you a man or make references to your assertive ways, don't listen to them, don't let them get you down. They're just jealous. Keep your game face on at work but take it off when you get home just like most men do. All managers and entrepreneurs are loners by design. It's the way the system works. Your workers automatically keep a professional distance from you. They don't want to hear your sob stories. Your spouse at home doesn't want to hear them either so it's you alone with your own journey. Being an employee means you're always being told what to do. Being an entrepreneur means you're in charge of everything you do. You have to determine the type of person you are and go with it. Business and entrepreneurship have to be in your blood in order for you to succeed. A lot of women don't get into business unless they're in a crisis situation. Either the husband dies and the widow takes over the business, the husband leaves and the woman has to earn money to provide for her kids or they don't feel fulfilled unless they follow the idea they feel inside. You have two choices, action or moping. In order to succeed at anything, you have to start, do and keep doing all the time. Find the right idea that fits for you, do your market research. Get some money together then start on a shoestring budget just like many of our biggest corporations did. Knowledge is power. Don't go in half-cocked. Do your research beforehand. Write out some manner of a business plan even if you are not looking for a loan. Use it for yourself to get your thoughts organized on paper. The biggest problems according to some is overwork, stupid work, not working intelligently stress and despair when things don't go exactly the way you planned them and they never do. 
You have to either have a relaxed temperament or culture one so that you don't dwell on things or take them too hard. It's like that song, you have to still be standing when all is said and done through the tears and the fears. Women can get financing from banks if they have good credit but there are government programs set up to help women who are considered minorities. There are business organizations and institutions set up by women to help fellow women entrepreneurs. Many governments have a quota to buy X percent of their products from women. The biggest asset in any business is to find good people to work with you. You're not looking for friends and they don't want to be your friends anyway. You're looking for a trustworthy, loyal hard-working individual who can talk equally at your level without feeling intimidated because you're the boss but who also pays you the respect normally accorded to a boss. Your best bet to treat men at work is to be function-oriented kinda like we're here to do a job so let's do it. Small talk is fine but don't get too friendly. You're there to work. Keep the focus on that. Men like it this way because it's straight, simple and they don't have to bother socializing much which a lot of men don't really like to do. They just wanna do the job and be left to the fantasies in their heads. With women, you can be more friendly. Women want that emotional connection and support in the workplace, especially with a kindred woman boss. Be ready to work hard. People in business have to give it their all regardless of gender. If that's the choice you made, go with it. Pay the price with the best inspired energy you got. There is a fine balance between work, family and relaxation slash freedom. A lot of men put family on the back burner and give it all for work but as a woman, you will probably be expected to run the household as well as run your business. Know that this is your issue and try to stay on top of both to a fine balance. There are books about women in business at number 658.1141 and around HD 6050 HD 6075 at the library. There are general corporate books at number 338. Read them to get ideas, information and inspiration. Women in Management don't be a man, don't be a woman. Be a combination of the two. It's called androgyny. Be who you really are away from cultural brainwash. Everybody has the full spectrum of human behavior within themselves, it's just that society has indoctrinated us to be a certain way. The old stereotype of the female boss battle axe is gone. Women can be themselves more nowadays and not have to be a man just because they work in a man's world. Men have had to change too, to be less authoritative, more personable and humane because that's the way of the world these days, everybody going for a happy medium in the middle being who they really are, expressing their full spectrum of traits out in the workforce. At one time, our society didn't want women to win in a man's world but society is changing. Women have the right to be leaders in management if they so choose without sabotaging themselves because they subconsciously feel they don't belong. You belong, you have that right, you just have to be strong enough to do it but it's not just that women's lib thing. It's about who can take the company further. Women generally have good emotional sensitivity and cooperate well with others so they're often an asset in many work situations. The bottom line is if you can do the job well, it doesn't matter what your gender is. Men are not the one-dimensional dunces society has portrayed them to be. That's as wrong as saying women don't belong in business management so give them a break. Treat them with respect and 95% of them will meet you at your level. There will always be the insecure macho guy with chauvinistic attitudes around just like there will always be the arrogant bitch who thinks she's all that so play it cool. Be yourself. Women in general don't like to be in management positions because it's a man's world and no matter how hard they try. They still feel left out like they're not one of the boys and there's still the subtle chauvinistic discrimination gnawing away at them from the old boys network in the form of dirty looks, sarcastic comments, quiet sabotage, leaving the women out of the inner circle, etc. This makes many women feel so alienated and alone that they don't want to be part of it. The other tough part of women in power positions is the need to be masculine while still a woman. You have to be assertive sometimes and act tough like a man but inside you're presumably still gushy and emotional and you need loving and sensitivity so after acting masculine all day, you need emotional comfort and if you don't have a good man who can give it to you, the management job could toughen you into being hard and serious, 
keeping it all in like a man or because you don't have a suitable way to release your true emotions, the management job could make you miserable all the time. Because you have to wear that tough, assertive mask. The only solution I can offer is don't try to be someone you're not, namely a man. If you're a genuinely nice person, don't change, continue being nice but don't let your workers mistaken your kindness for weakness and try to get one over you. If that happens, take them aside in private and tell them straight up not to mistake your kindness for weakness and if they try, you will deal with them harshly. Management is all about personal relationships, being a good leader by being nice, supportive and inspired to your workers. As a woman, you have an inherent sensitivity that should give you an advantage since men, even though they may be as sensitive, often spend much of their time trying to keep it in. Instead of being tough, be nice and positive to your workers and you should make a great manager and leader. Honey traps more flies than poop. Write it out and hang it up on your office wall or make it your theme sentence on your computer screen saver. Be nice as much as possible. Only be tough if one of your workers is being an asshole. Be yourself. Talk rationally about work and any decent man will respect you and let you do your job. Don't try to overcompensate for being a woman by acting like a man. Just act sensible with your male employees and you will get along. You will probably befriend some women under you but some will be jealous and scorned bitches are hell to deal with. In that case, play it cool. Fight their jealousy by being nice and supportive to them. You might win a few over, some you won't. You can't change everybody's perception of you. Don't let them ruin your moods at work. Ignore them or get rid of them. As a woman, you're an inherently worthy human being just like any man. Don't ever let anybody make you think less of yourself than that. If you do, it's your fault. You've given another person and the cultural forces of the world permission to get to you and mess you up. You should be strong enough to stand alone as an autonomous being. That's what true strength is all about. That's what it takes inside to be a great leader anywhere. You've got nothing to prove to anyone but you. Stay strong with what you feel inside and go with it. Inner wisdom is always the right wisdom away from all the crap they tried to teach you in school. That's true power. When people see that, that's when they respect you for real. Some men may try to be mean to you or quietly compete with you and try to sabotage you. In these cases, they're the jerks, not you. Don't let them get to you. Don't let them see you sweat. Just continue being who you are, a nice dignified person who tries to be friends with everyone, even enemies. Whatever you do, don't be the aggressive, scorned bitch alpha female boss. If you do, you will be playing into that witchy bitchy archetype. Keep your femininity at work no matter what. Don't be submissive, just be a rational human being who expects respect not anything less. Don't get caught up in the management role at the expense of being your real self as a true leader. Don't become a rigid person and a workaholic. Keep that fresh young feminine sense about yourself. Just like there's sexual harassment by men on women so too is there sexual harassment by women on men. Don't use your position to try to get younger males to go out with you or sleep with you. Cases like this have been prosecuted. It works both ways. Keep business and personal life separate especially now that you're in a position of authority unless you're absolutely sure it's true unconditional love. Own your own power and you will be a great leader. Women seem to have an inferiority complex and feel they don't belong in authoritative positions. They generally feel that they have to be nice and passive all the time. They generally feel that any success they achieve is not really due to their own efforts, rather just luck and circumstance but this is all faulty thinking. You're as worthy as anyone. Drop all the psychobabble emotional baggage and get on with it. You're as powerful as you want to be. Be yourself. Make it happen. Books about women in management are at number 658.114, number 658.409 or HD6053 to HD6073 at the library. Women in Management One-Liners
The following is a brief section I got from scanning about five different magazine articles which were all interviews with women managers in the workforce and one of the reasons I include it is because you can see how it's barely different from what it takes to be a good male manager. The job is essentially sexless. The bottom line is results. Do it well regardless of gender. If you can do the job and give people what they want, they don't care what color or sex you are. Have a vision. Know where you want to take the company. Be strong about it but be flexible and open-minded at the same time too. Don't go to extremes. Don't be a man, a girl looking for guys or a pushover. Don't be a tough boss. Socialize but not too much. Don't be gangbusters. The workplace has its own flow. Follow it. A positive attitude is great but don't be too bubbly because it's too phony. Don't be a know-it-all bitch with a running joke about how fantastic you are in the privacy of your own mind. Everything in business exists on relationships which is why you have to be sociable and culture allies everywhere. Don't be a chatterbox. Don't be overly sweet or apologetic. People are tough. They're there to work not to be excessively polite. Female subordinates expect you to treat them with respect as team players. They want you to care about them to be a coach. Teamwork is necessary for productivity but the coach has to steer the ship. Don't try so hard to be a perfect manager. Be natural. People constantly make judgments about you based on your current behavior but they've often figured you out to their own satisfaction within a few weeks after working for you. Be consistent. Don't be a scatterbrain who's complimenting someone one minute then angry the next. Delegate your high-priority work and give them credit for it. It builds trust both ways. You trust them with your work. They feel that you trust them and try hard. Help people find what they're good at. If they're good people but don't fit in the current job, put them in another one. Don't color your hair unless you want that phony vibe that despite all your professional abilities, you're still just another brainwashed victim of the frivolous, pop culture world. Love what you do. Try to be a win-win, cooperative team player. Don't sacrifice your dignity. Be who you are. Read the story of Esther in the Bible for inspiration, the orphan girl who became queen of Persia, Iran. Give people the opportunity to shine at what they do. Be compassionate and respectful all at the same time. Share the workload. Do the grunt work if the situation demands it like a big order has to be shipped out. Get in there and work with them. Don't be passive. Be active and authoritative when you need to be. Make a good first impression without sacrificing your dignity. Always act graceful like a lady with the confidence of a man. Learn from other women and men in business. Befriend them. Follow office protocol. Don't talk too much. Don't gossip. There has to be a professional distance between you as the manager and the other girls. Pick your fights for only things that really matter. Let the trivial stuff pass away. Take risks sometimes. Don't always play it safe because of your lack of confidence and fear of failure. Be aggressive and assertive when you need to be. Be patient. Don't be so ambitious that you sacrifice your dignity. Make allies wherever you can. Be serious at work. Don't be uncertain. If you're not sure about something, get somebody's advice. Don't be a control freak. Don't tolerate abuse from anyone. Don't be an egomaniac. Be a friend. Don't be funny like a corny sitcom but make the atmosphere light and easy. If you have problem employees, let it ride for a little while but if the problem doesn't clear up, you have to be direct get it out in the open and resolve the problem, either a good mutual solution or get rid of the problem. Don't be afraid of conflict. Face it. Deal with it. Men generally turn to women executives for a team effort and everything in business is a team effort. Women are more thoughtful and less spontaneous than men which is a plus in business. Men like to destroy each other playing ego games but since many don't see women as a threat, they don't bother them. Women are nurturers, they instinctively like to help others. This is great in business. Be creative. Don't beat around the bush. Be straight, open and fair. 
people will test you to see what you are made of. They will put you on the spot in front of others. You could take the challenge if you are sure you will win or you could be mature, ignore the games and tell the punk to get back to work then figure out a way to either reel him in or cut the line. When you fall off the horse, get back on it. Reclaim your authority. Be a good listener. Be open-minded. Work as a team. Be an inspired, inspirational person. Use your head and your heart to make intuitive decisions. Women, with women's intuition, are good negotiators and good people people. Your boss expects loyalty so after you have a baby, the less time you spend away, it means the more dedicated you are to your job. Women are more cooperative than men. Be a dreamer and a doer. Lead by example. Share information with your workers. Don't spend time on the small stuff like paperwork and social telephone calls. You're there to work. Do the job. All work and no play makes Jill a stressed out bore. Minimize stress. Love what you do. Relax a little. You get promoted by doing great work and letting the brass know you're motivated and want more responsibly simply by being bright. I'd and bushy-tailed all the time. Listen to your elders. They like to think somebody is interested in their advice. Remember, it's business, the bottom line is profit. If you can't do your job, they will fire you. Intuition is great but use logic too. Encourage the free expression of ideas in all directions. Create your own challenges. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Business is masculine so act masculine but don't lose your femininity in the process. Do what you want. Follow career and family in any combination you want. The old boys club is now a dinosaur. You can break into wherever you want. Don't let snubs or failures stop you. Opportunity is self-created. Supposedly, because women have denser corpus callosiums than men, the bridge between the two hemispheres of the brain, they can think better about everything not just limited to one narrow area of life. Men can be slobs, women still have to take care of their looks with makeup and clothes. Men can be workaholics, women are perceived as weird if they're single and have no life outside of work. Business is a journey of self-discovery in something you're interested in. Be focused but not egotistical. Be flexible, be yourself. Learn about your craft. Find your center, be at peace with yourself. Do what you love. Use the sisterhood of women to help one another. Work hard. Don't be a whiner. Be self. Sufficient. Stay objective amidst the gossip and turbulence of the business world. Business is hard work for everyone. You must love what you do in order to enjoy it. It must be a worthwhile, joyful challenge for you. Love your work and you will succeed. Use your feminine charm subtly one-on-one. -on -one. If you abuse it, men will lose respect for you and try to get revenge which means don't lead a guy on with flirting behavior unless you plan to go all the way. Keep the business in business. If you do well, give back some of your time and wealth to help others. Don't show that things bother you. If you're underpaid or not getting your just due, you can stand up for your rights loud and clear but it might be too loud for comfort and alienate the head so be subtle about it. Be warm and sociable. Be dedicated, passionate and lucky. Type A's, the high-strung types don't make it. The high-energy ones who know how to stay calm do. Start at the bottom, work your way up like everybody. Don't expect support at the beginning. Get your head on straight about balancing career and family. Find other women like you who can be mutually supportive with. Persistence is the key to success. Being a woman can be an advantage because a lot of corporations want more minorities in executive positions. Working for a woman who's the boss. Women aren't stupid. They just act that way either because they've been conditioned to or they know that men generally don't like pushy, mouthy, intelligent broads so they play along but in the world of work, many women are put into leadership management positions where their true colors show. In general, 
women are practical people having been taught to be frugal with homemaker skills all their lives plus they have women's intuition which means they're very emotionally sensitive able to read people and the vibes in a group slash office setting very quickly. My experience as a man working with women has been good except for the insecure ones who felt threatened by me and felt they had something to prove to the world. Generally, if I respect someone, they respect me back. I like to work for women because I feel they generally have more emotional depth than men, I can talk to them more openly than men and there's less of that ego game that's secretly happening every time you make eyeball to eyeball contact with your boss. With men, the boss may be thinking you're a threat to his job while you're possibly thinking you can do his job better than he can. With women, it's a more cooperative, teamwork type of thing. Women have a soft, tender feminine side more so than men that they have to keep inside while at work acting businesslike. If you as the employee try to prey on her soft feminine side and try to take advantage of it, she will resent you for it. A woman in charge doesn't have to act like a man but she can't act passively feminine either. She has to put that assertive mask on at work. It's tough enough on her to be something that's not intrinsically part of her nature so you'd better respect it. Of course, there are exceptions, namely women who have no qualms about being coldly ambitious and Machiavellian but most women are intrinsically nurturers, they want teamwork, cooperation, friendship, and sharing. That's how you work for a woman. Be a team player. Help each other. Talk things out. Offer input. Women want a two-way street not just to delegate authority. If you're a man working for a woman, be stable enough so that your ego doesn't get in the way. Just treat her as another human being. Many women don't want to come on too strong so they don't say much or try to be your friend to get you to like them. With passive, insecure women, you have to take the bull by the horns, do your job well, tell her you can't read her mind, she has to tell you what she wants done, tell her the workers need structure and order, to be told what to do, to know the routine what's happening and she has to be the one to provide the authority as the boss. Some women just like men get into power positions and let the power go to their heads trying to dominate everyone around them and control them like a queen bee. In such cases, you have to grin and bear it for a while but try to chip away at the tough exterior by talking to them subtly saying teamwork and cooperation work best, we're all only human, things like that. Take her out to lunch and talk to her. If she's still a hard ass, it may be time to look for another job or you just might have to focus on her positives, learn what you can from her and disregard the rest. Everything comes down to people relationships. It's not gender specific. Treat people how you want to be treated. Regardless of whether your boss is a woman or a man, treat them with respect and friendliness and they should do the same to you. Books about working for women are at number 650.13 or HF5548 at the library. Chapter 2 Women's Business Topics Women and Minorities Business Loan Women and minority applicants may be concerned that they have received less favorable treatment which is related to their gender or race. All business applicants have certain protections against unlawful discrimination under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. The Act makes it illegal for lenders to deny your loan application, discourage you from applying for a loan or give you less favorable terms than another applicant because you are a woman or a minority group member. Under the law, a lender may not take factors such as sex, race, national origin, or marital status into account. In addition, the lender may not ask for information about your spouse unless your spouse has some connection to the business or unless you are relying on your spouse's income to support your credit application or relying on alimony, child support, or separate maintenance payments to establish credit worthiness but the lender may ask you for information about your spouse if you are living in or you are relying for security on property located in a community property state, Arizona, California. Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Washington, or Wisconsin. Whether your business is large or small, if you are not granted the credit, be sure to discuss any questions you may have with the lender. If you are not granted credit by the lender and you believe the lender may have acted unlawfully, you can seek further assistance from the regulatory agency that supervises the institution. If it becomes necessary to seek legal assistance, 
the Act provides some remedies. If you have been denied credit because of unlawful discrimination and are able to prove it, courts may award actual damages and in some circumstances may impose punitive damages against the lender. If a lawsuit alleging discrimination is successful, the court also may award court costs and attorney fees. Women and Credit There are many married women who have no credit because financial matters are handled by their husbands and they are not even aware that they are without any type of credit rating. This is a large problem in America today. Divorce seems to be the predicament that taunts women in search of their own good credit ratings. Either the wife did not have any of her own credit during the marriage or the credit she shared with her husband took a bad turn during the divorce. Under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, women have the right to build up their own credit without being discriminated against. Women who do not apply for credit in their own names are at a distinct disadvantage. In the event of a divorce or death of a mate, there won't be a credit history reflecting any personal contributions. Under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, there is no reason for women to lose their identity when they are married. For many women, financial matters are handled by their husbands and they are not even aware that they are without any type of credit rating until divorce snaps them into reality. Either the wife did not have any of her own credit during the marriage or the credit she shared with her husband took a bad turn during the divorce. The key to your credit success, regardless of your marital success, is that you build your own soul and separate credit. There are many benefits to be gained. In the event that the marriage does not work out, each spouse may part with their own credit. If the wife was always on time with her payments and the husband was poor with his payment schedule, they should be able to part ways with her credit intact. Another good reason to have separate credit is in the event a financial tragedy comes your way, leaving you with no alternative but to file bankruptcy. It might be possible that one partner could file while the other remains clear. If your husband currently has all the credit, have him place you on his accounts as a sharer of the account. You want to be sure you share the account but not the contractual liability. This way you will not be responsible for his errors. If it does show as a negative on your rating, you will be able to dispute it as you did only share the account. If the account is in good standing, work on getting it on your credit rating as you may take the responsibility for the good rating. For men in similar situations, try the same method. If neither the wife or the husband have any credit then both would sign the account as joint in privileges and contractual liability. Continue this process until you both have enough credit to get credit singularly then as your new sole and separate accounts begin to get established, start closing the joint accounts you once shared. The purpose of this is to establish your credit as sole and separate. Consider also the use of a joint checking account. A clean checking history is very helpful in building credit however, be wary if your spouse is particularly neglectful when maintaining a checking account, the end result could cause more harm than good. Both men and women are protected from discrimination based on gender or marital status but many of the law's provisions were designed to stop particular abuses that generally made it difficult for women to get credit. For example, the idea that single women ignore their debts when they marry or that a woman's income doesn't count because she will leave work to have children is unlawful in credit transactions. The general rule is that you may not be denied credit just because you are a woman or just because you are married, single, widowed, divorced, or separated. Here are some important protections. Usually, creditors may not ask your gender on an application form. One exception is on a loan to buy or build a home. You do not have to use Miss, MRS, or MS with your name on a credit application. In some cases, a creditor may ask whether you are married, unmarried, or separated. Unmarried includes single, divorced, and widowed. Child bearing plans. Creditors may not ask about your birth control practices or whether you plan to have children and they may not assume anything about those plans. Income and alimony. The creditor must count all of your income, even income from part-time employment. Child support and alimony payments are a primary source of income for many women. You don't have to disclose these kinds of income but if you do creditors must count them. Telephones. Creditors may not consider whether you have a telephone listing in your name because this would discriminate against many married women. 
you may be asked if there's a telephone in your home. A creditor may consider whether income is steady and reliable so be prepared to show that you can count on uninterrupted income particularly if the source is alimony payments or part-time wages. Many married women used to be turned down when they asked for credit in their own name or a husband had to co-sign an account and agree to pay if the wife didn't even when a woman's own income could easily repay the loan. Single women couldn't get loans because they were thought to be somehow less reliable than other applicants. You now have a right to your own credit, based on your own credit records and earnings. Your own credit means a separate account or loan in your own name not a joint account with your husband or a duplicate card on his account. Here are the rules. Creditors may not refuse to open an account just because of your gender or marital status. You can choose to use your first name and maiden name, Mary Smith, your first name and husband's last name, Mary Jones or a combined last name, Mary Smith Jones. If you're creditworthy, a creditor may not ask your husband to co-sign your account, with certain exceptions when property rights are involved. Creditors may not ask for information about your husband or ex-husband when you apply for your own credit based on your own income unless that income is alimony, child support, or separate maintenance payments from your spouse or former spouse. This last rule, of course, does not apply if your husband is going to use your account or be responsible for paying your debts on the account, or if you live in a community property state. Community property states are, Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. Married women have sometimes faced severe hardships when cut off from credit after their husbands died. Single women have had accounts closed when they married and married women have had accounts closed after a divorce. The law says that creditors may not make you reapply for credit just because you marry or become widowed or divorced. Nor may they close your account or change the terms of your account on these grounds. There must be some sign that your creditworthiness has changed. For example, creditors may ask you to reapply if you relied on your ex-husband's income to get credit in the first place. Setting up your own account protects you by giving you your own history of how you handle debt to rely on if your financial situation changes because you get widowed or divorced. If you're getting married and plan to take your husband's surname, write to your creditors and tell them if you want to keep a separate account. Your gender or race may not be used to discourage you from applying for a loan and creditors may not hold up or otherwise delay your application on those grounds. Under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, you must be notified within 30 days after your application has been completed whether your loan has been approved or not. If credit is denied, this notice must be in writing and it must explain the specific reasons why you were denied credit or tell you of your right to ask for an explanation. You have the same rights if an account you have had is closed. If you are denied credit, be sure to find out why. You may have to ask the creditors for this explanation. It may be that the creditor thinks you have requested more money than you can repay on your income. It may be that you have not been employed or lived long enough in the community. You can discuss terms with the creditor and ways to improve your creditworthiness. If you think you have been discriminated against, cite the law to the lender. If the lender still says no without a satisfactory explanation, you may contact a federal enforcement agency for assistance or bring legal action. Federal Trade Commission Washington, D.C., 20580. FTC.gov. Free booklet Women and Credit Histories. Women's Consumer Network. POB 3742. Washington, D.C., 20007. 888, WCN, 2221. Newsletter and Discounts. 800, 229, 5336. Discounts on Vitamins. Women'sConsumerNet.com Chapter 3 Marketing to Women Marketing to Women 1 Women are not a target market. They are the market. Women want cooperation and community. Women make 83% of all consumer purchases. They make most decision within families. There are many more women single parents than men single parents. You want to come off like a helpful friend who knows what she wants and are there to provide it both product-wise and emotion-wise. Help a woman. 
appeal to her health if she's over 40, to her beauty if she's under 40. Make her feel like she's part of a woman's community, a sisterhood so to speak. Make her feel like she's living in the pages of one of them cutesy home Dietger type magazines she reads. Instead of striving for the big idea hard sell, try to seduce women by being helpful, sociable and pleasant with them. Think of conventional advertising to women as the following two paragraphs. Instead of love which rarely works the way you want it, build a comfortable relationship with the things you own and the foods you eat then diet and exercise like a mad woman so you can look beautiful and sexy because you are worth it. You are virgin, whore, mother, fun girl, bitch, rebel, feminist, goddess, sexy, sex object, beautiful, young, thin, trendy, fashionable, elitist, wealthy, responsible, career-centered, wife, lover and glamorous socialite all in one according to conventional advertising. Just like in the game of love, the game of marketing to women is to make them feel special. Give them a deal, a break, or the illusion of a deal or a break. Kiss her, cuddle her, tell her you love her even if you don't but this is generally not enough anymore because women are not the one-dimensional people we once thought they were. They want love and to feel sexy and pretty but it's not that big a deal in the grand scheme of making it on their own, being independent so to speak. The zeitgeist has shifted. Thirty years ago, it was all about marketing to how beautiful, youthful and sexy a woman wanted to be or how great of a housewife she could be but nowadays, most women over 40 have no illusions about love, beauty or family bliss anymore. They're as independent as men, no they ain't getting any younger or more beautiful, know that chances are they won't meet a prince charming and know that the idea of a happy family with kids ain't gonna happen so the marketing has to change to cater to the practical woman who's paying her own bills, taking care of herself. Many are either divorced or will never marry and say they are content with their lives. They can handle life without a man. In fact, they don't want typical one-dimensional men. If they can't find a decent man, they would rather be alone and comfortable with their lives. The frivolous ads about beauty and youth are still there but you have to be practical to women too, telling them you can do something to help them in a real way as you would if advertising to a man. Women like a sense of community, especially with other women which is why you should try to create a community for women somehow and as a result of that, they will buy into your brand. The easiest way is to create a website that helps women somehow and brings them together through chat forums and reap the benefits by sponsoring this portal that helps people. Marketing to men is about using sexy women. Marketing to many young women is about using sexy women acting like they're beautiful, thin, and frivolous but anywhere over that, basically all women over 30 are starting to realize there is no prince charming coming on the scene even if they're married so be smart and sensible when marketing to women over 30 years old. If you put out silly commercials catering to frivolous women concerned with coloring their hair and hiding their wrinkles, you are demeaning them reducing them to one-dimensional pop culture clones with nothing better to do than worry about their looks. Be honest. Portray real women in the real world with their own intelligence. Don't just focus on looks for young women or cleanliness in the home for housewives. Focus on intelligent, independent, practical people who want to get the most out of their money and the most out of their lives. The old way of marketing to women, created by men, portrayed them as one-dimensional dunces who wanted nothing more than to be thin, beautiful, married and in the kitchen. The new way sees women as independent people in control of their own lives. Even though I still constantly see all this one-dimensional advertising geared at women, portraying them as sexy young things or happy housewives, both women themselves and marketing academics say this is too simplistic. Be more honest, real and substantial when marketing to women. Most women now work a job outside the home. Respect them as career people. Women want to run their own lives with or without men and, in general, they are homebodies. Whereas a man doesn't care about home Dietger, a woman wants to surround herself with comfortable things. Women are still emotional but they want the emotional appeal of the ad to be directed at them, what the product will do for them as opposed to what the product will do for their marriage or their ability to find a guy. Today's cool woman is independent, has a decent job, pays her own bills, 
is sexy and sassy when she feels like it in her own way, enjoys comfort and some luxury, has a pet, is practical, enjoys good food, goes out and has fun, takes care of her health, exercises, monitors herself for serious diseases, might have a kid or two either with a husband, a wife or alone, drives a nice car, has a comfortable home and works side by side with men in a man's world. Older women now have money so for the first time ever, ads are geared to them, the menopause crowd who are free to do whatever they want because they have money which equals power. They deserve comfort which is the crux of much of this advertising, including food which is a kind of guilty pleasure for a lot of women free enough to be good to themselves. Through it all, no matter what, all women are secretly romantic and no matter how fat, ugly, independent, old, or masculine they are, they still have this fantasy or dream. It's alright to present ads with a bit of romance just don't make them seem too fake and stay focused on the practical, functional part of the ad. Think of a woman as in the middle. She still wants to be sexy, thin, and beautiful but at the same time wants to be free, in control of her own destiny and an equal out in the world of working people. Read the magazines directed at the demographic category of women you're trying to market to in order to get a feel for what they're doing or at least what they're currently being indoctrinated by as to what's cool and happening right now. In a nutshell. Show women you want their business. Provide a good product. Tailor it to women if it has been traditionally a male product. Try to see a market to them. Instead of just selling golf clubs to women, sell sportswear athletic footwear, gear bags in cool-looking women's colors, stylish shorts, bikinis, bicycles, etc. Women love accessories and new products so constantly add to the inventory of what you're selling to them. Watch women's talk shows, tabloid shows, and TV commercials geared for women and see how often they try to get the woman to feel sexy as they say. Marketing to women too. Powerful, confident, sexy, and full of energy. Marketing mantra aimed at women over 30. As far as retail goes, women spend more money than men. They buy the food, the clothes, the things for the house, the things for their kids, makeup, cosmetics, clothing, etc. For girls, shopping is an end in itself, a recreational activity done to get some enjoyment, to check out what's out there and get a good feeling by buying that new sweater, new shoes, new eyeshadow new earrings, etc. Shopping malls are geared for girls. All the cutesy boutiques with their nice, cozy feelings, with the music, the trendy sales clerks, etc. are geared to put the girl into this frivolous, girly girly land she's been indoctrinated by ever since she was as a kid, things like you look beautiful, you're trendy, cool, classy and fashionable, part of the in crowd of glamorous people, treat yourself, you're worth it etc. The entire beauty industry of cosmetics, weight loss products and trendy clothes rests on the insecurity of women. How did the average American woman get like this? She reads frivolous women's magazines, watches TV shows where thin young girls caked over with hair coloring and cosmetics, dressed in tight, trendy clothes are portrayed as the cool, happening, trendy women of society so she feels inadequate and insecure then buys all this stuff in an effort to conform to this fantasy image created by some corporate heads, probably male, in some back room somewhere with airbrushed, cosmetically enhanced, amphetamine popping young girls who will only be like that for a season or two then come back down to reality as their true human forms kick in because we're all imperfect human beings not like these girls posing in magazines with computer enhanced pictures. Clothing is primarily impulse buying for women which is why boutiques are wide open. They want women to see everything. Some put little relaxation lounges in where girls and their boyfriends can linger and look around. Girls have been brainwashed to think that fashionable clothing, jewelry and cosmetics can change them somehow, improve them, etc. so they're suckers for it. Corporate forces know it and cater them. It's too bad but girls are suckers for trendiness vanity, trying to be cute and dazzling. Guys aren't fooled by it. They know the difference between a lady of substance and some airy vamp trying to be all trendy but that's beside the point. 
the point is appeal to her vanity and you will make money all the way from teeth whitening products to weight loss shakes to lingerie. Women are very into relationships, being loved, looking thin and beautiful and being picked out of the crowd as the special one kinda like Cinderella and when things don't work out the way this fantasy is projected onto them then the way they internalize it is to look for comfort products to make it all better for the moment. In essence, comfort products are a substitute for the love you aren't getting or for the crappy way you feel because you have low self-esteem as the psychobabblists call it which means in plain English that you didn't have the guts or toughness to probe your own life to see what was in there then tried to live an inspired life true to your own inner standards so you're just this manipulated pop culture clone with no foundation of who you are as an individual human being. These comfort products could be anything like shopping addiction for clothes, purses, etc., food like gourmet ice cream and locale potato chips, diamonds to make you feel sparkly, cigarettes to keep you feeling thin, makeup to make you feel sexy, wine to make you feel good, hair coloring to keep up the fantasy that you can be glamorous, chocolate to make you feel that love is possible, etc. Women have been manipulated all their lives through advertising more so than men. Some of it is bad but some of it is good if it supports a good product. Most people think they're too cool and smart for advertising to work on them yet everywhere you look all you see is pop culture clones thinking they're free and independent. How many girls around do you see with colored hair? I rest my case. Anyway, if you're a woman, know that you're being advertised to all the time and it has affected you whether you admit or not, generally the younger the more brainwashed. If you're a business owner, don't get left out of at least 75% of the consumer market. Advertise to women. Women are very loyal. Just like they're loyal to their men, they will be loyal to products they like so make your products good up front so they will like them and keep coming back for more. Most women are in a race to be superwoman just like their culture has indoctrinated them. Be thin, beautiful, a career woman, lover, housewife, and mother. Probably 75% of all advertising is geared for these few areas of women's lives. With women gaining more influence in the workforce and starting their own businesses in unprecedented numbers, the lesson is clear. Women have a lot of money, control most of it in the home so unless you're selling beer or fishing lures, you'd better tailor your marketing to them. Marketing to Women 3 Women actually control slightly more than half, 51.3%, of all personal wealth in the United States. They make 83% of all household purchasing decisions. More women than ever are getting a college education, the biggest stepping stone to high-paying jobs. Women outlive men. It's not illegal or unethical to target your marketing efforts at women, it's the only way to go. Women buy just as many cars and computers as men so if you're advertising your latest sports car to men, Add a few ads in there geared for women about how cool, independent, adventurous and desirable they will look if they ride around in your sports kitu. If it's a woman's product, obviously advertise to women but if it's a traditionally men's product, think twice, start advertising your motorbikes and golf clubs to women too. Make them a bit smaller than men's sizes to accommodate them. Appeal to comfort works on the 40 plus chunky but funky Oprah crowd. If you sell gourmet cat food, women will buy 90% of it and men 10% because it makes them feel their cat is special therefore that they're special. Provide great service. Offer informational brochures with your products. If you treat a woman well, she will tell her friends about you and buy your stuff for her daughters whereas for guys, unless it's a Harley, he could care less about what shampoo he uses or how soft his socks are. Women like to share ideas and gossip. Get a website geared for women and put a chat room on it. It doesn't have to be a website geared for your product. Gear it for 30-something mothers, psychics for women, women for God and family, women's health, or something like that then state that your company is the host of the website and put a little icon there for your products. She wants to pamper herself because she wants to feel like she's worth it which is why overpriced luxury towels and spa treatments always sell even though they're unnecessary. Women want a textured ad that feels nice rather than some Neanderthal screaming that he's got the best cars at the best prices. 
Focus on home values, family values, the home, apple pie, patriotism, the church, i.e., home, families, kids, school, and traditional values. Use women in your ads, not scantily clad sexy ones but real women like Ms. Average America. Who is that? Go to your local supermarket and watch the people there for a few hours. Marketing to women is being straight up, sincere, and honest. Women just play dumb because it makes life go easier with egotistical male clods. Their women's intuition is generally superior to men's intelligence partially because they have thicker corpus callosiums which is the bridge between the two brain hemispheres so they can think more intuitively and more complex thoughts than men. Women are into this eco-environmental, social causes, save the seals type thing so putting an eco-friendly icon on your box of detergent or offering to donate 10 cents of the cost of every box to the Clean the Water Foundation might be a good idea. Don't use frivolous, skinny-looking models or so-called celebrities in your ads, use real-looking women. Older women have more money than young women. Market to them. Women like to buy nice things for themselves, their pets and their kids. Women are into new age stuff, psychobabble, connecting with other women in the sisterhood a la Oprah slash oxygen, alternative medicine, health foods, diet foods, and organic foods way more than men. Successful marketers unite women somehow then put their product in there as part of that connected feeling like starting a breast cancer charity, Weight Watchers meetings, really geared to sell Weight Watchers food, Saturn Corporation starting Saturn owner clubs, etc. Gear some advertising for the intimate bond, the bond between mother and son or daughter, the bond between an adult woman and her mother and father, the bond between a woman and a man, the bond between girlfriends, the bond between a woman and her dog or cat, etc. If you sell something like office supplies, instead of advertising to businessmen, add a few school bags, make your computers available in different colors then advertise as office, school and life supplies. Device products women could use like the jogger stroller, the papoose knapsack, knapsacks you strap on your back with your baby in it, kitchenware as on the infomercials, beauty products, etc. Marketing to women websites. Try number 658.834 or HF5415 to HF5823 at the library for books about marketing to women. Faithpopcorn.com slash trends. Imagocreative.com. Windsormedia.blogs.com Women.com